Good morning. Up to this point, we have only worked with definite integrals. Today we introduce the indefinite integral. A definite integral has defined limits. An indefinite integral does not have defined limits. Flippin physics. Is that it? That seems too easy. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, that's the basic difference. However, in practice, it is a bit more complicated. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's start with the derivative definition of acceleration. Bobby, please rearrange the derivative definition of acceleration to form an antiderivative or an integral. Uh, acceleration equals the derivative of velocity with respect to time. Multiply both sides by dt, and we get dv equals acceleration times dt. Take the integral of both sides, and I guess we do not add the limits because we are doing an indefinite integral, and you said indefinite integrals do not have limits. Taking the integral gives us velocity equals acceleration times time, and this integral assumes the acceleration is constant and does not change as a function of time. Thank you, Bobby. However, I will point out that because this is an indefinite integral, what you have said here is not quite correct. On the left-hand side, we do get velocity. However, notice that velocity changes as a function of time, so this is velocity as a function of time. Also, whenever we take an indefinite integral or an integral without limits, we need to add a constant of integration or capital C to the equation. What is a constant of integration? Yeah, what is capital C? Good question. In order to figure that out, let's determine the value of the velocity function at the initial time, or time equals zero seconds. Billy, please do that. To determine the value of the velocity function at time equals zero seconds, we plug zero in for time, when we do that, we get the velocity at zero seconds equals, well, just the constant of integration, capital C. Oh, that means the constant of integration equals the initial velocity of the function. In other words, the velocity as a function of time equals acceleration times time plus velocity initial. And we can re rearrange that slightly to get velocity final equals velocity initial plus acceleration times time. That is one of our uniformly accelerated motion equations. Oh, yeah. Velocity final equals velocity initial plus acceleration times time is a kinematic equation. Kinematic equation? The uniformly accelerated motion equations and kinematic equations are two different names for the same things. Oh. How did velocity as a function of time become velocity final? Well, when you plug a time into the velocity as a function of time equation, you get a velocity at that time, which is exactly what velocity final is. Oh, right. So the initial time is zero. The time final is time t. The initial velocity is at time equals zero, and the final velocity is at time equals t. That makes sense. Thanks. You're welcome. But why did we not add a constant of integration to the left-hand side of the equation? Well, thanks for helping there. Billy, we certainly could do that. Let's look at what happens when we add constants of integration to both sides. Constant 1 on the left side of the equation and constant 2 on the right side of the equation. We can subtract constant 1 from the whole equation, and we get constant 2 minus constant 1 on the right side. Oh, I get it. The quantity constant 2 minus constant 1 is just still a constant. So it, it does not matter. Adding a single constant c on the right side is equivalent to adding constants to both sides. Thanks. Thanks for the question. All right, let's get back to the equation we derived. Velocity final equals velocity initial plus acceleration times time. Bo, please substitute the derivative definition of velocity in for final velocity and rearrange the equation to solve for another one of our uniformly accelerated motion equations. Sure. Velocity equals the derivative of position with respect to time. Multiply both sides by dt and take the integral of both sides. Do we do a definite or indefinite integral? Let's do an indefinite integral again. Okay. Indefinite integral, so no limits. The integral of dx is just x, but 
it is position as a function of time. And that equals, well, we are taking the integral with respect to time. So acceleration times time squared divided by two plus, uh, is it velocity initial squared over two? No, velocity initial is a constant. So the integral of velocity initial with respect to time is velocity initial times time. Okay, yeah, so, uh, um, and, and plus the constant of integration C, and we need to solve for C. So we plug in zero for the initial time, and we get that the constant equals the initial position of the function. Uh, yeah, so we get position final equals position initial plus velocity initial times time plus one half acceleration times time squared, which is one of our uniformly accelerated motion equations. Nice. Correct, Bo. And notice that the constant of integration C for both of the equations we just solved for equals the value of the function when time equals zero. The constant of integration is the initial value of the function. Right. It is the value of the function when time equals zero. Now, let's get back to the derivative definition of acceleration and approach it a bit differently. Hopefully you can see that the derivative of velocity as a function of time is equivalent to the derivative of velocity with respect to position times the derivative of position with respect to time. I don't see it. The dx's cancel out. Well, you can do that? Yep. It's the chain rule. The chain rule? Yeah. The derivative of y with respect to x equals the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of, of u with respect to x. Cool. Yep. And the derivative of position with respect to time equals velocity. So now, Billy, please rearrange this and use a definite integral to solve for another kinematic equation. Absolutely. That means we can multiply both sides by dx and get the definite integral of acceleration with respect to position from position initial to position final equals the definite integral of velocity with respect to velocity from velocity initial to velocity final. The integral of acceleration with respect to position equals, well, acceleration is a constant, so that integral is just acceleration times position and at the limits. Substituting in the limits gives us acceleration times position final minus acceleration times position initial or acceleration times change in position. The integral of velocity with respect to velocity equals velocity squared over two and add the limits. Substituting in the limits gives us velocity final squared over two minus velocity initial squared over two and Oh, I see it. We can multiply the whole equation by 2 and reverse the sides and then add velocity initial squared to both sides and we get velocity final squared equals velocity initial squared plus 2 times acceleration times displacement. And that is a third uniformly accelerated motion or kinematic equation. Why did we use a definite integral and not an indefinite integral this time? Thank you, Billy. Both. The reason we used a definite integral this time and not an indefinite integral is because, in this case, the indefinite integral solution is a bit more cumbersome. I have included that solution in my lecture notes on my website if you want, if you would like to see it. Now, there is one more uniformly accelerated motion equation we can solve for. We can use two of the equations we just derived to derive a fourth UAM equation. Starting with velocity final equals velocity initial plus acceleration times time, we can rearrange that equation to solve for acceleration. Then we can substitute that equation for acceleration into the equation position final equals position initial times velocity initial times time plus one half acceleration times time squared and subtract position initial from both sides. Time squared over time reduces to just time. And we can factor out time. Velocity initial minus velocity initial over 2 equals positive velocity initial over 2. Factoring out 1 half gives us the fourth, and sadly, often ignored, kinematic equation. Displacement equals 1 half times the quantity velocity initial plus velocity final, all times time. Mr. P, actually, 
doesn't that just equal the average velocity times time, which we know equals displacement? Why, yes, Billy, it does equal average velocity times time. I thought it would be more fun to derive the equation this way. Okay. Uh, I thought we were going to use integrals to solve for all four UAM equations. Sure. How about y'all do that? Use the fact that uniformly accelerated motion means the acceleration is constant. Displacement equals the definite integral of velocity with respect to time from time initial to time final, and this example graph of velocity as a function of time for uniformly accelerated motion. Uh, I agree. We know one definition of an integral is that it is, it is the area under a function, right? So? so? Well, we could pick a time t and then determine the area between the velocity function and the time axis. Okay. That would be the red area in the graph. We could split that into two different areas, area one and area two, and the total area would be the sum of those two areas. Area two is a triangle and has an area equal to one half base times height. Using those variables, area one is a rectangle of area equal to base times height, and the base of both areas has a length equal to just T. The height of area one is velocity initial. Oh, and the height of area two is velocity final minus velocity initial. And that is the same equation we had halfway through the last solution. So this also gives us the same uniformly accelerated motion equation. Nice. Yeah. Actually, we could have just used the equation for the area of a, of a trapezoid, right? What? is the area of a trapezoid equation. Area of a trapezoid equals one half times the quantity base one plus base two all times height. I'm not seeing it. Oh, uh, the trapezoid is rotated by 90 degrees. Oh, I see it. Base one is velocity initial, base two is velocity final, and the height is the time. Nice. Yep. It does work out to give you the fourth uniformly accelerated motion equation. But what if the velocity function is not a straight line? Yeah. These equations are for uniformly accelerated motion. Oh. Um, and a constant acceleration is a constant slope on a velocity as a function of time graph, so the velocity function for uniformly accelerated motion is always a straight line. Yep. Very nice, everybody. Realize we just used the definitions of velocity and acceleration and calculus to derive four uniformly accelerated motion equations, which are also called kinematic equations. I think that is awesome. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.